Hello there folks, this is Barry Tude and welcome to the Gradual Report, where we report gradually. This week in news, India officially bifurcated the Jammu and Kashmir into two different union territories, namely Kashmir and Ladakh. Although the decision was announced a few fortnights ago, it goes official as of now. The demand for a separate administration or a government was a long pending one in the region by the local people and India finally gave people what they wanted. It is also to be noted that a delegation of EU MPs visited Kashmir after the historic decision to see and inspect for any human rights violation. After the two, the EU MPs said that Article 370 is India's internal issue and no human rights are being violated in the region. The MPs added that they stand by India in its fight against terrorism. All that being said, here is the new map of the territory. As you can see, this area on the right is Ladakh and here on the left is Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan and China has obviously objected to the map because of how it includes the area that they administer. The Exaichin region, as you can see on the map, is administered by China and POK region is administered by Pakistan. But other than that, there are no major international backlashes. Next up, this week on Halloween, we saw a hero that we desperately need but might not deserve. A man dressed up in the popular PUBG costume saved a man from getting mugged and his bicycle from being stolen. Here is the video of the viral incident. When this gamer witnessed a crime unfold in front of him, he brought his quick thinking and bravery from the screen to the real world. I really didn't think, I just saw him coming my way and sort of knew what was happening, so I had my frying pan in my hand, so I just swung it at him. This is 31-year-old Jeffrey Dweller. While on his way to a Halloween party this evening, he put his skills to the test. I couldn't see him yet, I just heard shouting and he, um, he, uh, he came around here and that's when I knocked him down. Watch again as Jeffrey springs into action, knocking the thief off the bike. And as for the outfit, I'm pretty much their poster boy. Jeffrey was on his way to a friend's house this Halloween evening, dressed as a hero from his favorite game, PUBG Mobile. It was like I was watching it in slow motion. I think I definitely owe that guy a beer. Did you expect to be a hero tonight? <laughs> it's, uh, it's not quite how I expected my night to go, but I'm glad I could help. Yeah. Next up, the Enforcement Directorate filed a charge sheet on Saturday before Delhi court against Ratul Puri, nephew of Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Kamal Nath, in money laundering case in which irregularities in the purchase of 12 VVIP helicopters from Augusta Westland was found. This is again in connection with the PMLA case that emerged from the CBI FIR of August 17 in which Ratul Puri, his father Deepak Puri and mother Neeta, who is also Kamanath's sister, were booked in the connection with bank fraud of Rs 354 crores. Looking at the speed so far, we might even get the decision soon too. It's been almost six years since the regime changed and we haven't seen such serious scams committed by the government. It's funny how we almost forgot about all these scams. I guess that's why Congress is out of power. But I would also love to know your thoughts on it. So do leave a comment and tell me what you guys think. Next up, in a massive breach of security and privacy, at least 121 high-profile Indians, mostly activists and journalists, were targets of a massive snoop through an Israeli spyware that broke into phones through WhatsApp. The spyware is called Pegasus and it gets into the user's phone when the person gets a voice call or a video call. As the phone rings, the attacker transmits the malicious code and the spyware is installed even if the user does not answer the call at all. By taking over the phone system, the attacker gets access to the user's WhatsApp messages and calls, regular voice calls, passwords, contact lists, calendar events, phone's microphone and camera. It can even turn on camera and mic to track and hear what is happening around the user. And we have seen such things before. We have seen 
phones just randomly recording your conversation and shows you ads based on that i believe if a proper inquiry is done many companies would be found guilty to have more or less the same practices obviously there is an official statement by the government of india and you can read it on the screen right here but as of now the government of india is denying its role as alleged by some activists and i do agree with the government because i think the bigger problem is not the government but big tech let me explain this again falls just in line with violation after violation and big corporate level thefts from none other than our very own facebook we have seen how facebook sells all of their users data to other companies and even stealing data from people who were not on their platform we also saw how congress grilled mr zuckerberg on his new cryptocurrency libra and the concern is obvious we can't even trust you with the data we cannot trust you with the messages we cannot trust you with the contacts you have been stealing it and you have been selling it so now why we should trust you with our money it's funny how a year ago whatsapp made a big deal about 128 bit end to end encryption for privacy and what not but now in retrospect we see they essentially put a lock on your data so that only they can use it and possibly sell it if someone pays the right price for your data but then again these are just my thoughts and i would love to know what you guys think about it and do let me know and finally we have pm modi who was on his visit to bangkok for the asean summit which just concluded he launched the coin marking the 550th birth anniversary of shri guru nanak dev ji although it's a muslim country but because we share a common cultural heritage the coin was unveiled at a special launch event after doing that pm modi announced that india will finally pull out from the regional comprehensive economic partnership and free trade negotiations which are backed by china This comes as a very strong move from India as almost all the issues were unresolved in the negotiations. Strategically speaking, entering into such deals with China will further help China's agenda. We have seen in nation after nation that gets into deals with China or any other kind of monetary help from China. They all fall prey to China's modern day economic colonialism. other major factors were obviously dairy and milk product markets dairy is a very important industry here and after the deal the surplus from other countries will definitely hurt the local market that is because most of it is produced locally and most of the consumption is also local the dairy market is not fragile so to speak and can definitely survive but it's not as industrialized as the other RCEP nations and their products will definitely have an upper hand in the competitive pricing but the industry that is fragile is textile we do need to protect our textile industry we do have a upper hand in the raw materials and their export but our refined products manufacturing is low our exports in that area are low quality of the manufactured good is not that great and we definitely need to work on the pricing bangladesh is already exporting more textile way more than india bangladesh actually holds more than 34% of the global textile trade so we do have to compete a lot there another industry that can be hurt is steel but we have a giants like tata so this industry can avoid many negative impacts but it would have been tough nonetheless so i think we have dodged a bullet there by pulling out of the negotiations union minister piyush goyal has tweeted and congratulated pm modi for the historic decision and you can see the tweet here on the screen So that's it from my side do leave your thoughts in the comments and give this video a like while you're on your way to the comment section and don't forget to subscribe later